Good laugh, my friends. You've come to the right place. You've come to the right place. We're going to crack you up with this short video. And we're going to look at a CNN article that says the mighty U.S. dollar is getting even stronger. And we're going to have a good chuckle. So don't forget to subscribe down below. Thumbs up. All right. Here it is from uh, Paul LaMonica. The mighty U.S. dollar is getting even stronger. Uh, Dateline, February 13th, 2019. It just written a couple of hours ago. Before we go there, though, I want to go to Google. <laughs> uh, for the love of the good Lord. So I, I saw this on my phone, by the way. So I said, hey, you know, because I, I check, I do check the markets every now and again. I saw this article. I just like to see what the what the articles are. And if you can see that, because that's on my phone. This is the article we're going to read. I was like, oh, let me read that. Uh, and then I went to Google. I typed in CNN money, strong dollar. And this is what I came up with. May 2nd, 2018, a U.S. dollar is making a huge comeback. Uh, November 6, 2018, why the strong dollar is so bad for business. August 22nd, 2018, a weaker dollar would be good for stocks. Uh, the, <laughs> April 17th, 2018, the dollar is sliding, and that's great for stocks. Uh, 2016, uh, November 16th, 2016, the U.S. dollar has 13-year high. And it's weird. That's right after the Trump was elected. I mean, all this stuff, it's just the whole thing. You cannot premise your investing based on the silliness from the financial art me, uh, porn media. I mean, it's literally no, what, that's what they are. It's financial porn. You just can't do it because, it, I mean, A, they don't know any more than you and I. They just don't. They, I mean, I'm sorry. And they report, they regurgitate the same stuff over and over and over again based on sim simple markets are up. Why? Everyone wants to know why. There is no why necessary for the markets being up on any given moment. You just don't know. And there was some pure speculation. <sighs> anyway, all right, so let's go with this. This will make you laugh. And I like to laugh. Um, and you will, too. All right, so here, the mighty U.S. dollar is getting even stronger. Well, I, I thought we're, whatever. All right, so let's go down here, because before they're saying it was, it was strong, then they're saying it's not strong, then they're saying it's weak, then they're saying it's strong. We just don't know. All right, so let's read old uh, Paul here, and they, they're going to talk. Uh, don't know who that guy is. Let's see if we can find him. Uh, hold on just a second. Where are we? All right, here. When Fair, Fed Chair Jerome Powell signaled last month that rate hikes will probably won't happen anytime soon, many experts thought that it hurt the dollar. Powell said the central bank needed to be patient and see what happens next for the economy. Low interest rates usually go hand in hand with a weaker currency. Oh, for the love of the good Lord. Think of Japan and the yen during its lost decades of negative rates, deflation, and sluggish economy. This is like CO2 causing global warming. I, I just, I can't, this is nuts. <sighs> All right, so what comes first, low interest rates or weak economy? I, you know, a, no one knows, but do low interest rates go hand in hand with a, a weak, econ weak currency, excuse me? What is stronger, the dollar today with a 30-year treasury about three and a half or the dollar in 1982 with a 30-year treasury about 15 and a quarter? What is stronger, the currency today, the dollar, with a 10-year treasury at 2.7 or in 1982, the 10-year treasury at 17 and a half? I mean, it's, it's nuts to say the dollar is stronger then than it is now. No, no it's not. No one's going to sit there. That's why inflation was so high back then. Because the dollar was so getting devalued in front of our very eyes. When Nixon went off the gold standard with Bretton Woods, uh, that just immediately made the dollar just fall because of fiat currency. And this is what happens. And when you have fiat currency, it causes uh, the, the dollar to lose its value. Are we still on fiat currency? Absolutely. But we've had you know, 50, 40, almost 50 years now, a pretty strong growth in the U.S. economy, which has able to, at least to people say, Look around. They said there's no other better game in town. This is the Tina economy. There is no alternative. Was the Japanese, uh, Japanese, the uh, Japanese yen, the Chinese yuan, all those things are not the alternative to the U.S. dollar. They're not. It just is not. And so because that demand for the U.S. dollar is huge and the demand does what? It decreases prices. When prices go down, when, when I mean, increases prices. So a huge demand, a huge increase in prices, huge increase in prices lead to a lower yield. That's what's happening. I mean, again, you got a 10-year bond trading at 3%. Demand for that 10-year bond goes up, which means the prices go up. Now that 10-year bond is trading at 12. It was trading at 10. What happens to the yield? The yield goes down. 
because at the end of the day, that 10-year bond is still going to mature at 10 and it's still going to have a 3% coupon. The price in that 10-year bond goes up because huge demand, the yield in inherently has to offset. It's like a seesaw to go down. So the demand in the 10-year bond is huge. The yields go down. When that happens, that means a high, strong demand for the dollar. We did not go to negative interest rate policy like the Europeans did. We did not have to do that because the demand was still high because the U.S. dollar is messed up as it is, is the only game in town. All right, but the U.S. dollar index has rallied 1.5% against other currencies at the Fed's January 30 meeting, uh, taking many by surprise. An increase of 1.5% may not sound like a lot, but it's actually a very dramatic move in the usually sleepy world of currencies. The sleepy world of currencies are sleepy because no one cares other than traders like George Soros, which is just uh, the only people who should care about currencies would be people in the, the 5, 10, 15, and 30-year bonds. That'll give you a gauge of the demand of the dollar. Let's just put it that way. I don't care about any individual. I literally could care less. It's, a, it's the demand of the dollar, which is going to dictate interest rate policy. And interest rate policy is dictated because that's going to affect everything from borrowing mortgages, you name it, business lending at the long-term de debt, the long-term interest rates, intermediate term, just make all that happen. It has nothing, nothing to do with the feds, nothing. Feds will dictate short-term rates. The feds don't dictate long-term rates. I've already shown that a million times on Sunday. They just don't. They don't dictate long-term rates or even intermediate term rates. And I even go on record, say not even five years, but they certainly dictate short-term, short-term money, six months and less. Absolutely. Long-term money? Nope, not at all. What determines that? Demand. And the demand is strong, high, when the, when the currency is strong. The demand is low when the currency is weak. Thus, you go back to 1982, demand was weak, interest rates are high. All there is to it, my friends. Uh, that could wind up being a problem for you with big U.S. multinational companies, market leaders that are the biggest components of the down S&P 500. A strong dollar eats into the value of the international sales. Dow components, Apple, Boeing, Caterpillar, 3M, generate a significant amount of their sales from foreign markets. Those are the stocks that almost every average investor probably has exposure to through mutual funds and whatnot. A stronger dollar has already helped drag down growth of companies that have reported their fourth quarter, quarter earnings. S&P 500 companies with more than half their sales coming from the U.S. have posted their earnings growth of 16.6%, according to data from FactSet. That compares to growth of just 8.4% with companies with more than half their sales generate overseas. All right, I, I agree with that. Stronger dollar does hurt your... Uh, uh, it does hurt companies that are dealing with overseas because it just makes your products more expensive, which is why the first thing mercantilists do uh, in silly economies is they devalue the currencies so they can increase exports. You don't want that. You don't want to, to decrease your value. Basically, devalue your currencies so that way you can make your goods cheaper overseas. That's bad. That's mercantilism. You don't want that. You want a strong dollar. Strong dollar leads to everything. Dollar leads to everything that's good ultimately for sure. I will say. Uh, post the earnings growth of 16.6%. And even the ones that uh, had a uh, high, uh, got hurt by strong dollar, earnings growth of 8.4%. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, a strong dollar helped around. I want to read that again. A stronger dollar has already helped drag down growth at companies that have reported their fourth quarter earnings. You got fourth quarter earnings growth of 8 to 16%. Uh, that's good news. I don't know if that's annual or just, I don't know what that is. That's, that's good news, my friends, because they're saying the fourth quarter was supposed to be pretty laggard. Man, six, because I'm telling you, what, what's the, how do you figure out or project future stock returns? Earnings growth year over year, plus dividends. And I would add, like my man Med Favor does, uh, stock buybacks. We never used to do that. We used to just add earnings growth year over year plus dividends. Uh, now, earnings growth year over year, if we're getting eight, to 16%, that's that's stellar. That is stout. That's interesting. The strong dollar is just one of the reasons why multinational profits have lagged. And 8.4 while lagging, still pretty doggone go, good by me. <laughs> Economic weakness in Europe, the UK, China, Japan, and other international markets are to blame as well. Huh. Could it be economic weakest, weakness as hurting the sales for overseas markets? I would think so. These two things are related. If the U.S. economy remains healthier than most other major developed and developing countries, the dollar will likely rather further. Huh, who knew? If that happens, that can make the situation even worse for many of America's largest companies when they report their first quarter earnings in April. 
The Chinese slowdown makes Dara look more attractive. Remember when Chinese, China was going to take us all over? Uh, several experts do think the dollar has already has legs left in it. Yeah, uh, Those are a fatigue from the yo-yo trade headlines with China are now starting to focus on the fact China's moderating economic conditions remain a major overhang for global growth and narrative. Huh, it's almost like Trump knew what he's doing. I don't know, huh? Chinese economy is not sitting as pretty as we had thought, that's for sure. So when's the time to negotiate from your position of weakness or condition, position of strength? Well, the U.S. is in a position of strength. Now's the time to negotiate, and that's what he's doing. I mean, like him or love him, hate him or love him, doesn't matter. He knows negotiating, and now's the time to do it. In other words, the dollar could keep rallying if China's growth sl slows further, particularly if that winds up dragging down other emerging markets with it. But with its sluggishness eventually hits the U.S., most experts expect it won't hurt economic uh, growth in America that much. That's why the dollar making dollar may continue to be the cleanest dirty shirt yeah, okay it's not a question of people flocking the dollar because they want to is that the data from europe and china and elsewhere has just gotten markedly worse i.e the tina there is no alternative i, I tell you i am 100 an american nationalist and i love hearing stuff like this this, this just makes me happy <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you it makes me happy i love when Amer america is back it's awesome because while we're not capitalists by any stretch of the imagination, we are more capitalists than all these other guys. And for us to win means the good guys are winning. We're the good guys. We are. We're the freedom guys. That's why people kill to come here. Literally, they kill to come here. <coughs> or they'll get killed or they avoid being killed so they can get here, which makes it wonderful. I love it. It's fantastic. More, more of this, more of this, please, because I'm I could not be happier. I've been saying for a long time the dollar, the the value of the dollar is dictated by the the yields you get in the longer term. The longer term yields in America are low. That means we're doing just fine. And that was true under Obama. I give him that. Look, Obama's a leftist. I, you know, I didn't vote for the guy. He never did me right. But at the end of the day, he didn't ruin things. No, 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 no. I mean, and I actually agree with some of the stuff. I absolutely do. Not all of it. You know, I like Trump, but Obama, some of the stuff, I did not like the way they did the health care. But at least they did it via the congressional vote. At least they did it by politics. They paid for it, but at least they did it with voting. And then it can be done away with by voting as opposed to executive orders. I don't like executive or orders at all. But at least I give Obama credit. He got his people behind him. They voted for that stupid Obamacare. And I tell you. I, I, and look, I didn't even have any problem with some of the stuff in Pelosi was saying. Like, and she said this. I just, oh, nah, it's a political tangent. She goes, wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to worry about health care so you could go do the things you want to do? And, and essentially what they're saying is he, she didn't say a single payer outright, but she's, it's a good point. Now, I, the, mechanically, it's not going to work, but it's a good point. Say, look, if health care was no longer a burden, you could quit your crappy old job at 55 and go do whatever you wanted to do. And I thought that was actually a pretty good observation, good point. I wish, you know, I just wish. There could be a little bit more bipartisanship in the United States to, to get something like that done. It says, look, you're not going to go broke from your health cost, but we're also going to allow a free market for people who want the free market, too. I don't get why they can't. Yeah. All right. Let me get off that ramp. All right. So uh, I just wish they could do that because I, I think it encourage a lot of people to use to not live in fear so much and use this ingenuity, ingenuity that they have just living in the United States to do things that is helpful. All right. I want to share with you this. This is Sun Essentials Peppermint Oil. All right, so what you do is you take a little bit, you boil some water, take a little bit, you dump it in there, and then you breathe. You breathe. If you got congestion, I'm telling you, the peppermint, breathe some of that in there, man. By the way, if you want to kill fire ants without um, uh, the, the chemical stuff, orange oil, orange oil, I'm telling you, dump some orange oil on fire ants, you'll kill those suckers too. So I'll put links in the show notes. But this would be my product of the day. Sun Essentials Peppermint. Love this. Stuff. Anytime I get congested like this, I have a couple times a year. Dump some of that in some boiling water. Put a towel over your head. Let the steam come up. Oh, it feels great. All right, my friends, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks now.